Hi guys and welcome to another 7 minute lecture. We're shining the spotlight on one of my favorite books of all time today, something I consider to be the most important work of fiction in the 20th century. It's something I always recommend especially to my students and I firmly believe that reading this book is crucial, absolutely crucial for understanding modern politics. Let's look at why. Firstly, it's short. It's not even a novel. It's a novella called Animal Farm, which I'm sure many of you have heard of. It's only around 100 pages and anybody can read it in a single day. The prose is clear, like most of Orwell's work. You never really have to reach out for a dictionary or scratch your head wondering what a certain word means, right? It's very easy to understand with simple words written in a simple language. And while that might seem like a frivolous reason to some, it's really not. Because one of the big problems with enlightening novels is that they're usually massive and dense. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. And certain books have to be that way in order to get their message across. Tolstoy's War and Peace, for instance, or Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged, are both important books in terms of understanding many facets of modern politics. But the ordinary reader would have a very difficult time getting through either of those books. So when we look at Animal Farm, on the other hand, even a teenager who's never read a book, uh, who's never read a full length book rather before, can easily finish it. So that's very important. The second reason is that it's a great example of how metaphor and satire can be used to explore themes in a very subtle way, particularly political and social themes instead of having to bludgeon the reader over the head with it. Too often these days, we get authors and filmmakers and artists of all kinds taking up these political positions and being very outspoken about their views and using their art as a medium for voicing these views, which is perfectly fine when it's done in a subtle way. But let's face it, how many of them are actually subtle? Almost none of them. In contrast, Orwell's approach is the exact opposite. If you weren't aware of the political context behind it, you would just assume that it was a random book about a bunch of animals in a farm. In fact, there's even a famous anecdote about this where Orwell's American publishers wrote him a letter saying, unfortunately, it's impossible to sell stories about animals in the United States. And the manuscript was initially rejected by them. And it was only when the parallels were explained that they even understood what it was about. So what is it about then? Animal Farm, in a nutshell, is about power. It's about what people do in pursuit of power. It's about what happens to people when they are deprived of power. It's about what people do to retain power. And most importantly, it's about what people do to justify power. One of the hallmarks of Orwell's fiction, both in Animal Farm and in his other masterpiece, 1984, which I will do a separate video on somewhere down the line. Both works examine power in a way that holds up so well to this day. Orwell never really explains why power corrupts. He never really feels the need to justify to us as the readers that power corrupts. It's simply something that he takes for granted. And he also takes for granted that you and I, as the reader, will have the common sense to see this. So you won't really find explanations for why the powerful act the way they do or why people with influence and strength do whatever they can to hold on to power. Orwell is more about the how. He's far more interested in the mechanics of power than the philosophy of it. For those of you who haven't read the novella, let me just give you a quick spoiler-free snapshot of what happens. It's about an animal farm with a bunch of animals in it. They're sick and tired of being oppressed by the humans. So they revolt and chase the humans away and establish this utopian society in the farm where everybody is free and equal and there's no longer any oppression. And even though it starts off that way, the smaller, the smarter rather, animals like the pigs, slowly but surely start subverting the revolution to accumulate power for themselves. And page by page, we see them twisting the rules and coming up with new ones to make themselves more powerful. As this animal society gradually goes back to being precisely as oppressive as it once was 
before the revolution happened when the humans were still uh, ruling if that sounds familiar it should because clearly it's a repudiation of both communism and fascism which were the two major ideologies along with imperialism that Orwell critiqued in his writing career so why should you read this the simple reason is that it gives us all of us a great look at what governments around the world do really what anybody with power does to hold on to that power the pigs don't oppress the animals with brutality instead like most modern governments and most post-revolution and progressive societies control is achieved using humanitarian reasons control is achieved by convincing the general public you and i that it's purely for our own good that they need power that they aren't pursuing power for their interests but that they are these noble and benevolent creatures who seek power for our interests. Most totalitarian, uh, totalitarian societies become that way not by intimidating the people with weapons, but by convincing the people that it's for their own good. And once you read Animal Farm, once you internalize it, you will never fall for this ever again. It will always be a lot harder for this classic totalitarian trick to work on you. And if for nothing else, Animal Farm deserves to be read at least for that one feature. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like content like this, please don't forget to share and subscribe. Thank you. Take care. And I'll see you soon.